Hey guys, this is your hair for Ask Audio, and today I want to show you how to use the Reason Rec plugin as a MIDI controlled effect in Logic, which is really cool because we basically get to build an entire effect rack and then trigger the effect with MIDI notes, um, which gives you a lot of flexibility and um, that way you don't have to draw automation, but you can use simple MIDI notes to, to trigger effects similar to how the finger works by, um, by Native Instruments, uh, it's a reactor ensemble. So, um, what I have right here is a drum beat and if we route that drum beat just for now to my output um, it sounds like this pretty simple stuff but then if we use this uh, recent rec it sounds like this where the MIDI notes here trigger different effects. So um, I wanna show you how I created that. And to do that, I think I'm just gonna start with a clean instance of Reaper. So I'll just remove this one here. And then I'll choose the reason, actually I have to choose the MIDI controlled effect because it needs to be able to receive MIDI notes. Then we go to Reason Studios, there. All right, so it comes up like this, and now what we need to do is the, the sound that we want to process, in my case, is my drum bus. We want to send that to a specific bus that has no output. So in my case, I'm sending this to bus eight, and then bus eight has no output. So right now, we won't hear anything until we receive the sidechain here. So as soon as we receive the sidechain here, and we open the input-output device, um, the signal, we can see if, it work, if it's working, if the signal comes in there. So the first thing I did is um, I took the Reason Instrument Kong Drum Designer and I have that in here and right now if I play this and the MIDI notes that I have in my file here they will actually play this drum machine and that is not what I want. I want these sounds to trigger um, other effects so what we're going to do is we're going to flip the rack and then I'm not going to route the output of this drum machine. So let's um, let's find some effects. Let's first maybe go with a chorus or ensemble. And if we drag that in, it's automatically gonna route it. So now we should hear our drums, but then they should have a chorus on there. And we can choose some different presets here. I think I used the flanger for my other example. Right, pretty cliche, but uh, it works. And now what we're gonna do is I want to control this dry wet with a MIDI note. So right now, um, the the drum machine, what it has, it has these gate out messages, and that basically sends a CV message as soon as this pad is being triggered. And the pad is being triggered by this C1 note. So I'm gonna take that output and I'm going to send it to the dry wet CV input of this uh, ensemble, this uh, chorus. So right now um, this dry wet knob is being controlled when that when that drum pad is being triggered. So because of that I can set it all the way down and then let's see what happens. So it should trigger on these notes that are unmuted right now. and everywhere in between the sound should be completely dry. So this is one way to, to control an effect with MIDI notes. Now, not all of the effects will have um, that CV input there. So I'm gonna show you a workaround, but first let's also see uh, what else we can do. Maybe we can get a, um, let's see what would be cool here. We could try an echo, we could try a distortion. Like the, the trick here is to find an effect and then um, check the inputs. So we can flip the rack and then we can see most of them will have some sort of CV input. Um, but if they don't, what we can do is we can go to utilities here and we can use the combinator. And this um, effect, it allows you, it's, it's basically just an empty module and it allows you to add other effects. So let's add, for example, a distortion in there, like this pulverizer here. And then what we can do is we can map this. So if we click show programmer, we can um, map our macros to 
any knob on here so here we can select our our basic pulverization patch and we can see here that rotary one that's this knob and we can map that to some target so let's map that to the blend which is basically the dry wet mix so now if we move this knob here we can see it move there as well all right, and this one we can control because if we go to the uh, to the other, <laughs> welcome to the other side. If we go to the other side here, um, we can see that we have an input for rotary one, rotary two, three, and four. So what we can do is we can take the gate out of the second drum cell, and we can map it to rotary one, and that would be a C sharp because this is mapped chromatically. So now if this note note place we should see the dry wet going open so let's flip this again so as soon as that note hits we should see um, so that one we should see this knob move and it does there's one problem right now which um, is that it sounds like we're the sound is not actually being distorted and that's because the output of this effect we can hide the cables to make uh, things a little bit easier to see. You can see that the output here, the left and right, they're going straight to the main output and instead of doing that we need to send this to the input of our combinator. So we're gonna say left and then input. So now we should hear the distortion. Let's choose some different presets. So one problem that you might see is that this blend knob doesn't go all the way up. And that's because the CV amount, the total amount of, of modulation basically that it's sending is, um, is based on the, the audio signal itself. So what we can do is we can send a higher velocity value and then that will be our modulation range. So let's give this a full velocity. Now, um, we can, of course, once we have this, we can really start experimenting with this. Like one thing we can try is to duplicate this and create these fast rhythms. Um, of course, we can send other sounds to this as well, such as pads. Uh, let's try. Let's try one more thing. Let's go to our effects again, and let's use the retro transformer. I really like this effect, and this one actually, I believe, has a control for the for the dry wet. So let's see. We're gonna flip the rack again. We're gonna make sure that the output of the pulverizer sends to the uh, not that one. This one sends to the input here and this one as well and then the output there should go to our main output which is actually that bus right there all right so now let's flip this again and uh, what we want to control is this dry wet so first let's do a sort of dry test <laughs> I like that very distorted sound. So we want to control this knob. So once again, we're gonna flip the rack. We're gonna take the gate out for the third cell, and we're gonna set that up to the dry wet modulation here. So that would be the note D in here, which would be that one. And then uh, let's flip this and let's make sure that the dry wet is all the way down. Try this again here. So that's pretty cool, right? And you can see that we actually don't see this knob moving. That's because it's sort of it just internally happens. So with the combinator, when we when we route a macro um, or this rotary control to something, we can actually see it moving as as, as there is a MIDI node. Um, with the other with the other ones when we use a straight input without something in between we don't see that um, so just to to give you one more test let's right now we are routing our drums we also have a music section um, we could also route that so let's set this to um, actually 
let's send this just to our main output so that we hear our drums again. And let's try to route the rest of the track. So the rest of the track, it comes, in my, uh, comes into my music bus here. So what we can do here is we can send this to nothing and then I'll just create a send here to eight. And now they should work just the same, but then it's um, affecting the music bus. pretty cool right and um, there's of course much more you can do with it once you once you have it in, in this state um, but I just wanted to show you that idea um, actually one last thing that I also thought of what would be nice is you can also still use the logic effect so let's say you have something um, like we have that distortion first I'm gonna remove all MIDI notes let's say you have this distorted sound you could uh, create one long note out of that and then use the arpeggiator to create a rhythm let's see if that works for this one let's set this to maybe eight notes so now it's pretty much always on but we can try to control the note length or which is basically the gauge And we could also try this with a different effect. Let's try this one with the uh, with the pulverizer. Oh, actually, I need to, of course, enable my arpeggiator. Let's try to set that up. Um, oh, actually, we just have to change MIDI notes. So you could use this um, for a simple sidechain as well. There's, I mean, there's tons of things that you can do with this. So I hope uh, you got some cool ideas out of that. And um, thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys in another video.